Welcome to Rex Corner. I have Doug Brignoli back. We're going to talk about the difference of fats and carbs today because there's a lot of confusion going on. Should I eat carbs? Should I eat fats? What about the protein? How much fat? How much carb? Um, people who talk about starving themselves all day and not losing weight. And it's an issue. And especially with women who don't know, um, their eating gets way off and they gain weight real quick. Right. Really, really. And not eating is also bad. Now I want to talk yeah. about that. Okay. First off, I want to talk about the not eating because uh, there's people in my life who feel that if they don't eat, they're going to lose weight. And it's not, it's just the opposite. Right. They end up gaining weight. Right. Your body goes into starvation yeah, exactly. mode and it starts. Metabolism slows way down. Yeah, it starts storing fat. Right. So, what's your theory on that? Well, look, the first thing I'll tell you is that, you know, we all need food to keep the metabolism going. Right. But the, the thing that is critically important for me and for people like me, i.e., bodybuilders, is that you know we rely more heavily on carbohydrates than the average person. Mm -hmm. There's a one of the guys from The Biggest Loser that was on some morning show and telling everyone don't eat carbs after 12 noon. It's like, well, that's fine if you're not a bodybuilder. If you're a bodybuilder, you're going to lose all your muscle, you're going to deplete your glycogen, yeah. you're going to go into hypoglycemia, you're going to produce too much cortisol, and you're going to become catabolic. You know, it is. I've, I did the zone for a while, and the zone's fine for a person that just maybe does a little bit of cardio now and then. But for a bodybuilder, it will make you lose your muscle. Yeah, definitely will. So if you want to get lean, and you know you can't cut out the carbs, you have to cut out the fat. Okay. But this is only for the last three months. You yeah. wouldn't say it all the time. No, you can't. You can't have both. You have one or the other. Now, Jerry Bruton. No, Jerry Bruton. No. He's uh, a friend of mine. He's in his sixties. Black guy used to train with us down in Venice last week, a couple weeks ago. He's up to around sixty to seventy percent fats in his diet right now, and he's ripped. Oh, he's doing the Clarence uh, Bass thing. Clarence. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which the fats give you energy, and they they burn, and they don't store his fat, and he has the rest of his. Is he lean? He's lean and hard. Well, you know, all I can tell you is it doesn't work for everybody. Yeah, nothing works for yeah, everybody. Yeah, some people. Is it Clarence Bass? Is that his name? The, yeah. You know, if I did his diet, I don't think I would get that lean. And, of course, he doesn't have a lot of muscle mass either. Mm -hmm. So I don't know whether he's tried experimenting with the, with the other way, but I did the zone, which was higher in fats and lower in carbs, and I thought something was wrong with me. I mean, I thought, and then I realized, oh, no, I've just really messed up my diet. And then when I went back to the carbs, I was fine. We did that in the 70s. We did the high-protein, low-carb. I mean, dinner was like uh, two burger patties with cheese and cottage cheese. Yeah. You know, that was that every night. And it was the eggs in the morning. And, well, that uh, just that sounds like protein and water. <laughs> it's kind of like protein and water. I don't remember being starved all the time. Do you remember eating rice? I, no, I wouldn't eat rice. Because, you know, what's his name? Um, uh, Albert Beckles. Mm -hmm. He said chicken and rice, chicken and rice, chicken and rice. Oh, he yeah. ever ate. He's, he's, that's true. He does. He still does. He's yeah. 84 years old. Yeah. Uh, I remember training like that, and my benches were heavy, 400s and something. I was in good shape, but I had no carbs. But you must have known what Arnold and Zane and those guys were all doing, right? They must have been eating carbs. We were all eating the same thing. They were all meat and water, meat and water. Yeah, yeah. We were oh, in Deli every night eating cheese omelets and cottage cheese at 11 o'clock at night. Wow. And it worked. And then Sunday, of course, was the Well, cheese omelets, so you're talking protein and fats, protein and fats. Right. That's exactly what it yeah. is. So we had protein and fats. Yeah. We didn't have carbs. We had carbs on Sunday for a junk day. And then we were so bloated, mm -hmm. you could hardly move, and you felt like shit, and your eyes would swell up. But the diet worked back then. I mean, it worked. You know, you took other things along with it, yeah. testosterone or whatever to keep going. Well, you know, when I was 16, 17, 18 years old, mm -hmm. and I was trained by Bill Pearl in the early years, and we would all go out to breakfast afterwards, and, he, and Bill loaded up on pancakes. Yeah. I mean, there was no question he was eating the carbs after the workout, and that's exactly when you're supposed to. That's when you need them. You and need and he, he was ahead of his time because a lot of guys didn't even understand Biochemistry back then. Uh, I was told last year that someone told me that they have gummy bears after they work out yeah. to have the sugar. And that, but that's not even enough. <laughs> no, it's not even enough. You need you need yeah. that stuff. Some guy today asked me today, "What do you have?" And I said, "I'm a protein drink with wax and maize." Yeah, it's a complex carbohydrate. He says, "Why?" I said, "You need the carbs after you train. Yeah. This is the best time to eat." I usually it. have honey water right after my workout. There you go. Yeah. same principle. I and mean, during the workout, you don't spend protein; you spend glucose. Yes. Glucose and glycogen. That's, after the workout, you're in glucose glycogen debt. Exactly. So many people don't know that, and and I, so many guys I see in the gym don't even eat. Yeah. You know, I mean, no, that's gym, that's really the If I don't eat, you know, every I can feel my whole body starting to cramp up. Yeah. I mean, if you guys want to make gains in the gym, you got to follow a diet like yeah. this. You just can't go out and have tacos at four o'clock or pizza or whatever. I saw I saw one I don't know what it was article where this guy was claiming that the ideal ratio post workout would be three or four to carbs to one part protein. Okay. So he was uh, emphasizing carbs and you know minimizing proteins. I don't even think you need the protein because it's not 
critical at that moment. What's critical at that moment is to stop the low blood sugar. Wait, wait, you're talking about after your workout? Pro post workout. Oh, yeah, post workout for sure. So I have the honey water, and then I wait about a half an hour, I take my shower, then I have a regular meal. Yeah, you need the carbs uh, after that, but yeah. during the day and during the night, you don't definitely need sporadic milk, right. uh, protein because that's a feature your muscle right. makes it grow. Um, what about drinking a lot of water? Now, I have some people tell me to drink a gallon a day, and it just flushes them out, and I actually feel like it does help. Well, you know what? I, I, a long time ago, we all heard eight glasses of water a day. Mm -hmm. And and since then, we've also, I don't know about you, but I've read a lot of articles that have said that we don't need eight glasses of water I heard a day. Your thirst will tell you yes. what you need. Um, and that's just the thing is if you're thirsty, don't ignore it. Right. But, but drinking too much water is not only not necessarily beneficial, right. but could actually wash away too many nutrients and you know create a problem itself. So, you know, it's like anything else, too much or too little of anything. My doctor told me the same thing. So much water is going to wash away a lot of your sodium. A lot of your nutrients, yeah. Nutrients and your potassium. You need that, and you're washing it right through, yeah, and right. you have to have it. Uh, and I don't yeah, because your body has to get rid of it, and it's yeah. not going to get rid of it by itself. No, no. <laughs> it flushes it out, then you have that issue. You've got to replace right. it. Right. Something else, and like football players years ago used to have some salt tablets on the field because they were sweating it all out. Well, that's the thing. It's you know yeah. people like to do things to the extreme. They say, "Oh, proteins are such for muscle." Okay, so they eat 500 grams of protein a day. Yeah. Or they say water's good for you. Okay, we'll drink three gallons, gallons but, of water. But, but protein can turn to fat too. Protein can, but it's much more difficult for it to do that yeah. because um, I, I don't remember the exact numbers, and maybe some of the audience know this biochemistry. But the easiest to convert from a food to glucose is carbohydrate. Mm -hmm. The second easiest is fats, and the third easiest is, is, is protein, which means that you lose more of the calories from protein by using that as a fuel than you do by either fats or so. Let's just say you eat 100 grams of protein in excess. You might end up getting like 20% like of that yeah. as fat. Yeah. The rest just gets wasted. It's wasted out, right. But, um, but if you're eating carbohydrates, you're going to get 90% of that. Right. And uh, fats could be like have fats. You can have egg yolks, you can have avocado. Yes, Those and things. you should. Yeah. I don't, you know, we went on this kit for years about having egg whites, egg whites, egg whites, and send even even people that we know, I don't want to mention names, <laughs> you know, too. Yeah. Uh, he said, eat the whole egg. The yolk is good for you. And I've heard egg is the perfect food. It is the perfect food. So having the yolk isn't so bad. And saturated fats are critical to making testosterone. Right. So a lot of these people that are really depriving themselves of all dietary fats are actually creating hormonal imbalance. Yeah. No, you know, it's funny. I was talking to my girlfriend this weekend. You know, um, there have been girls that have written that have written books about what it's like to date a bodybuilder, like it's some kind of special breed of human being. It is. And I we said, special. and I said, sweetie, is, is am I hard to live with? And she said, no, you're like a normal guy. I go and I eat three eggs for breakfast. I don't eat a dozen egg whites. No, me either. You know, I don't. You know, I mean, of course, everybody's different in in the way that they like to regard themselves. I'm not going to criticize people for not regarding themselves the way I regard myself. But, but I do want to say that you know you can train hard, and you can you, you know eating like a bodybuilder requires that you eat enough calories, enough healthy calories. But it's not like some bizarre uh, in the off season. It's not a bizarre. Diet plan. I mean, I eat toast with butter. So do I. I eat eggs, whole eggs. You know, I eat potatoes. I eat rice. Sometimes I eat salad. Sometimes I don't. I eat pizza. You know, this is all in the off season. Come pre contest time, that's when it gets down to yeah. brass tacks, and it's just basically chicken and rice. Girls that you date that are into fitness and bodybuilding, or they work out and they're conscious about their their diet and their body, will understand this. You date somebody, not that I do. Because uh, my girl understands what I do, but you date somebody, say on the other side of LA, down and downy somewhere that works in an office job all day long. You have no knowledge of what's going on. They'll eat anything in the world. And they look at you like, "Why do you eat like this all the time?" This is what I do. And yeah. aren't you bored with it? Yeah, I get bored with it. You well, but we but we eat because because we want certain nutrients from yeah. our food, and we select our menu item based on on the protein, the carbohydrate, the, carbohydrate, the fat. They're, they're usually oblivious to what has what. Exactly. So they say, what well, tastes good? What am I in the mood for? Right. And, and so then that would be a little odd that you would actually order from the menu based on what you want for your body. That's bizarre to them. It's funny because you have habits as you grow up. And, and I'll go to dinner at our relatives, my girlfriend's relatives, and I'll have food laid out. 
and it's always good food, and I'll go right for the meat first, get all that protein before yeah. anybody else grabs it. And even if I'm not hungry, I'll eat it because I know i got to have my protein. Yeah. It's just a mindset yeah. you carry around for years. Yeah, and, and eating, eating a meal without protein really feels like you missed the most important part. Oh, my God. It's, it's like having sex without oil. And, and, by the way, yeah, and by the way, saying that protein is the most important part doesn't mean you need more protein in that meal than anything else. No, I mean, you just need some. You need, but you need it. You yeah. need the third of the calories from that meal should come from that protein. We, we went out last And it's, it's essential. For, for dinner uh, after fasting for the Jewish holiday and my girlfriend hadn't eaten for 24 hours. She said, I'm just going to have some chicken soup, which is not a lot of chicken in there. I right. said, you need something more. Yeah. You need protein. you got to have protein. And, and uh, I keep talking, you got to have protein throughout the day in order to keep your body fat down low. So she got a half of a chopped liver sandwich. Well, liver's got all the B vitamins and protein in the world. Right. right. And a half a sandwich is plenty. Right. So and chicken and soup go, go well together. It went well together. Yeah. It, was, it was perfect. <laughs> you had a nice meal. It made you feel good. I'm glad to see you eat this because... Yeah. You can't just live on lettuce. Women always like, I'll just have a salad. Yeah. I used to say on a date, I go out and I order a meal, I just bring a half a head of salad for her because the lettuce goes, that's all she's going to eat. You know, any girl, like, I, just, I always let the menu over for like an hour and so I'll just take the salad. You yeah. know this going in. So just order the salad. Yeah, but isn't that funny? It's like, but they don't, but you still want to look at the menu. So I got to look at the menu. There was a cute, there was a cute uh, video that somebody sent me. It was a, a husband and wife. Well, it's, you know, it's staged, of course. Yeah. Husband and wife, the wife is pregnant. But, you know, she couldn't eat sushi because she was pregnant. So she was forcing her husband to eat the sushi so she could enjoy seeing him eat. So reading the menu is part of the fun, part even the fun. if you know you can't order it. Any, you know, it's <laughs> funny, without closing, it's like anywhere I go to eat, in any restaurant I know, I pretty much know what's on the menu. Yeah. And if I don't know, I'll look it up online to yeah. see what's there. But if I'm going to go, I want to make sure i got choices. Sometimes there's not a choice. You know, yeah. there's things that you don't want to eat. So when I go in, I know right up. I know what I want. Yeah. I, I, you have to look at me, and I know what I want. Well, you know that you, you can narrow it down to you know either meat or chicken. Yes. Exactly. You've got to have some sort of protein in it. Yeah. And you guys out there that are training, you, know, you should think the same way. Just don't go eat pizza and you know, French fries and gravy. Or, right. I mean, come on. I just can't do And it. by the way, you know, pizza now and then is fine, right? It's, you know, at the end of the week, your body sort of averages all that it had, right? It's just when you've done seven days of pizza. That yeah, yeah. But they did say they did say uh, years ago. I read in the paper that pizza was the number one food for kids in school because it had most all the nutrients that you you need with the protein and the veggies yeah. on top and yeah. all that and yeah. carbs. Yeah. So it wasn't so bad. And they're high energy and they're burning most of that stuff. Yeah, off. yeah. There's a, there's the exception every now and then with a kid that's overweight. Um, but that's a genetic thing. That's genetic. And 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 the truth is, if he didn't eat that pizza, he might still be overweight. Probably. So there's there are other issues. In fact, did you see that video that somebody posted? Um, that comedian woman bashed fat people, dear fat people. No, I didn't see that. So she basically tried to make fun of these fat people and saying that a small percentage of them, you know, have genetic problems, but most of them are just lazy and overeat and and then there was a great nutritionist that came on and did a rebuttal. And I thought he was his rebuttal was excellent. He says, you know, they did a, a study of people that had surgical reduction of body fat, and they asked them afterwards, if you had a choice now to go back to being fat or lose a limb or lose your eyesight, which of those would you prefer to lose? Most of them would prefer to lose their sight or their leg really? to being fatter again. So it's a, it's a terrible plague for people that have to deal with genetic disorders that cause them to be fat. I mean, I know people that eat exactly like I eat, and even more strictly than I eat. And are overweight. Yeah. I've had clients that no matter what, this one client I had, she was on thyroid. And she stapled, stapled her stomach. We worked out six days a week. You know, she did everything right, and she could not lose that weight. So there are genetic disorders sometimes that predispose to someone. So I, I'm not the expert in that field. I mean, there are certainly people who are no, experts there's, in that there's field. there's reasons for all that. But the point is, and back to the, the eating thing, you know, it's... You, you want to make sure that you're eating as healthy as you can. Yes. But you can't, you know, starve yourself just because you have a genetic disorder and you lean one way. I mean, no, the starving is not going to help. It's only going to retain more fat. Yeah. That's why these people get frustrated. Yeah. So I'm 300 pounds. I can't lose weight. And, and you can't eat. diet and not exercise either. Right. You, 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 I can't. I don't eat, and so I can't lose the weight. Well, you, you have to eat. Yeah. That's what Weight Watchers is all about. It's accountability. Yeah. It's making sure they come in and someone's going to look at them, weigh themselves, look at the scale. And, yeah. And then you behave yourself because you don't want right. to be embarrassed at that moment. But you eat their meals throughout the day and that's what makes you lose the weight. It's not yeah. a bodybuilding weight right. diet, but it's a weight to lose weight. It's balanced. It's balanced. Yeah. Out. Right. Well, we can find you on the internet at Doug Brignoli. Uh, um, well, DougBrignoli.com. Yes. Uh, and also dbfitness at AOL is my email address. Or Doug at DougBrignoli.com. Okay. Or, just <laughs> or Facebook. Or just Doug. Yeah. Just put Doug. Come. You guys know where to, you guys know where to find me. Just Google Doug and you'll find me. You'll find Doug. You'll find Doug with me.
does go to Rick Grayson's Originals. I have them here for t-shirts with the original Goals Gym and um, the Golden Era Body Bling, which is really a big design. I have a new design coming out, which I'm gonna flash up here for you in a moment. Won't be out for the next couple of months, but it will be out and it'll probably be on bodybuilding.com. So- By the way, you know he's he does his own graphic arts. I do. It's not like someone does it for him. No. He's I an amazing guy. Spent hours with four pairs of glasses because my eyes are killing yeah, me. Yeah, and he's good on this, uh, uh, what's the name of that program? Adobe Photoshop. Photoshop. One of the best. One of the best yep. programs you could ever use. So thank you for watching Rick's Corner. Thank you very much. And we'll bring you more stuff next time and more guests and tips of the week and everything to make you have a, Always fun. a good holiday with a lot of food and eat right and right. stay in shape. The New Year's coming up very quickly. And when you exercise, you get the right to eat. That's right. Well, you do. Although, to a degree. <laughs> before closing, people say, you work out, you can eat anything you want. No, you can't. Yeah, and that's not a complete license. It doesn't but work like you that. You get to eat a little bit more than nothing. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. See you next time. Okay. Baby, see you next time.